So, uh, as you probably have heard, the Russian army has been amassing for the last two weeks where there's been very, almost no action in Ukraine except in uh, Mariupol, uh, where the Russians are slowly gaining ground and slowly taking over the city, and the Ukrainians are just heroically and, and uh, uh, resisting uh, the Russians. Um, but uh, the, the, the Russians have uh, taken the troops out of uh, northern Ukraine uh, and moved them all to the east. Um, and uh, today, uh, it looks like they launched a massive attack along the entire eastern front uh, of Ukraine from, uh, um, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the city, um, uh, in, in kind of the, in the center, uh, all the way south, um, throughout the Donbass area. This is an area the Russians claim uh, wants autonomy from Ukraine. This is an area dominated by ethnic uh, Russians. And, um, and uh, uh, you know, this is the, the whole Donbass area. Um, and, uh, you know, it, this is Ukrainian territory. Russia has no claim against it, uh, has no legitimate claim against it. Joe, thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I will definitely answer the question soon. Um, and, um, you know, they are, uh, they're fresh because they've been resting up. Uh, they brought in new forces. They brought in forces from the north that were devastated, but were the remnants of them. They've also brought people in, I think, uh, from different parts of the Russian, uh, from Russia itself. Uh, to reinforce the troops, uh, and um, it's uh, y y y and and it, they have a lot of a lot of firepower, a lot of forces uh, arrayed. The Ukrainians are super motivated, uh, and uh, as as I've told you earlier, I think motivation um, is uh, super important. Um, I think the atrocities that the Russians committed in north of Kiev, uh, the killing of uh, women and children and civilians, the raping of women, uh, the maiming of people, just cutting them up and, and body parts. Uh, on the other hand, the, the, the amazing heroic resistance of Ukrainian forces in Mariupol, um, all I think will inspire the Ukrainian forces to fight even harder, to be motivated even more than they were before. The Ukrainians clearly have something to fight for. They're fighting for their homes, their families, their land, um, and they're fighting against evil. And, and now they've seen evil. They've seen evil in, in the, the nakedness of evil. They've seen evil uh, manifest itself in the Russian atrocities all over Ukraine, wherever they've touched. And they've also experienced victory, uh, the victory in the north, uh, stopping the Russians from taking Kiev, um, and of course in the sinking of the Russian flagship, um, the Moskova. Moskova is basically Moscow. Uh, this was the pride of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. This was a flagship. Uh, thank you, Sam. Appreciate the support. Uh, this was the flagship. Uh, this is the ship that those uh, soldiers uh, uh, told to F off at the beginning of the war. Uh, this, this is the ship that represented um, Russian supremacy on the Black Sea. Um, and it, it got hit, it appears, by an anti-ship missile launched uh, from Ukraine, from the shore. Um, it, it probably hit one of their ammunition uh, rooms, uh, started a fire, and ultimately the ship literally sunk. Uh, to this day, we don't know how many of the uh, onboard sailors actually drowned actually were killed because Russia won't release that number. Um, there's just been no talk of it, but clearly many of them did. Um, uh, you know, and, and the fact that it, it you know, it just wasn't, wasn't just hurt, it wasn't just crippled, it was literally sunk, is, um, is quite an amazing, quite an amazing feat. And uh, again, a testament, I think, to the Western weapon systems that the Ukrainians are using. This was a Western, as far as I know, it was a Western anti-ship missile that sunk the Moskova, and uh, more evidence, as if we needed one, 
uh, that, uh, you know, Western weaponry, Western weapon systems, uh, you know, just, just a, a, a dramatically superior to anything that, um, anything that the Russians can muster to, to the superiority of numbers, uh, the superiority of firepower, uh, the Western weapon systems just defeat them time and time again. Um, uh, PR says the only world in which you could implement Ayn Rand's ideology or libertarian ideology is a world in which Putin wins. Uh, P.I., you don't understand uh, Ayn Rand's philosophy, you don't understand free markets, and you have no conception of who Putin is and what he is if you think that. That's just ignorant and stupid. Um, Sam? Who the hell is Sam? Didn't Sam shake some sense into you? I don't know who Sam is. Um, so uh, uh, Ukraine is going to hold on here. It's not going to be easy for them. They're going to take massive casualties. Uh, so is the Russians. Uh, it's, it's, I don't think Ukraine has the capacity because it doesn't have the firepower to take back uh, much of the lands that have been taken from it. Uh, they have tried, particularly uh, in the Gerson area, in the area of uh, the south central Ukraine. Um, uh, and they have not been overly successful there. Uh, and I doubt that they have uh, enough to be able to really push the Russians back into Russia. But I do think that they have enough to withstand the Russian assault and to inflict massive casualties in Russia. And look, Russia's already lost. As I told you on day, I don't know, five of this war, no matter what happens, Russia's lost. The latest significant evidence of the loss of Russia is the fact that... Um, both Finland and Sweden are considering um, joining NATO. Not considering, a likely, very likely, this summer to join NATO. I mean, if Sweden and Norway join NATO, that will be, this war will be one of the greatest strategic blunders in military history. And this is, uh, this is Putin, the strategic genius, right? And uh, it will extend NATO's um, border with Russia significantly. It will place uh, the Swedish military, which is, you know, a, a, a very well-trained, very effective military. Um, it has a Sweden. I don't know if you guys know, but Sweden has a, uh, a military-industrial complex. It has uh, it produces military equipment, very good military equipment. It will place that I industry at the behest of NATO. Um, Finland, which has fought Russia in the past, has a very motivated, very lethal military force. Again, that force will now be at the disposal of NATO. Um, it, this will be a massive, massive strategic blunder. Um, and it already, uh, it already is. So basically all Putin has managed to achieve in this war is to unite Europe against him and uh, uh, to bring Sweden and Finland into NATO, which will be huge. So uh, he's already lost the war, no matter what happens on the frontier. But I expect, um, yeah, Putin is a massive looter. Liam, thank you. Wow. Um, so I, uh, I appreciate that. <coughs> um, so we're now at $600. Thank you, guys. Anything above this is, is kind of um, to compensate for the few shows that I've done. But of course, I don't deserve it if I do so few shows. So, um, but, but keep it coming. Uh, it, it'll be great to, to have a good month in spite of the fact that I did so few shows. Uh, and, oh, and let me also say, I, I know I owe at least two uh, Iran Rules for Life shows, and I will make those up. I'm not sure exactly when, but I'm keeping count of the ones I owe, and I will make them up. So it's $651. Um, 
uh, Ukraine has received a lot of Western equipment during this lull in fighting over the last uh, three weeks. I expect that equipment to be well used in the east. I expect the Ukrainian forces are being reinforced by fighters from the north. Um, so not only the, did Russia reinforce its forces, so did uh, the Ukrainians. I expect the Ukrainians to continue to pound on the supply problems, the logistic problems that the Russians had in the north, and I suspect will have in the east. I uh, don't think strategy, uh, I don't think Russia has hired any brilliant new generals. I don't think they have any new uh, fantastic tanks. They don't have any new weapon systems that we didn't know about. Um, so I expect that Ukraine is going to put up a real fight. I expect that Ukraine will hold its ground. They might be defeated here or there, but overall, I think they will be holding its ground. They might take some ground from the Russians. It's going to be brutal. It's going to be bloody. Um, it's going to be massive casualties, and Russia will lose. Russia will lose because they already have lost, and because the longer this goes, the greater... Um, the greater the embarrassment and the humiliation is uh, for the Russians. <coughs> and note, for example, that we haven't heard much from China about its support of Russia in recent weeks, and that's because China has to a large extent backtracked from supporting the Russians, another Russian, significant Russian loss. Um, so, uh, again, I, I, I think uh, everything I said in the first day of this war uh, continues to be true. I don't think anything has changed. Uh, we will watch closely to see what happens uh, in with this new front opening up. Ashton, thank you. Wow, Ashton's been a terrific supporter of the show the last few weeks. Uh, this is terrific. Thank you. Um, and uh, Tazy, thank you as well. Um, so yeah, I will keep track. I'll update you if anything changes. We'll update you as fighting continues on the Eastern Front, uh, if there change, the dramatic changes either way. Um, I do not think Putin will resort to nuclear. Uh, you know, never try to uh, estimate what a dictator would do. Remember, I was wrong when it came to my estimation of Putin invading Ukraine. I did not think he would do it. I was wrong on that. I could be wrong on the nuclear option. But the nuclear option really is a nuclear option. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you used gas. Um, but nukes are very difficult to control, very, very difficult, um, very difficult to, um, you know, to, 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 to basically to control how they're used, where the radiation goes, who gets suffered, and how do you stop it from deteriorating from just a local nuclear um, a technical thing into a massive World War III. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.